Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So once again, this is Beth and I have prepared some more review questions for yours, ATIT's science exam. So here in this um, PowerPoint, I have made 15 multiple choice questions that you can answer with me. And then I have also made 22 flash, uh, bonus flashcards. And it has some cool pictures that will help you remember during your exam. Also, I have included uh, most explanations in every question, um, in every multiple choice questions. So let's get started. The first question, which component of the nervous system is responsible for lowering the heart rate? Is it A, autonomic nervous system, B, parasympathetic nervous system, C, central nervous system, or D, the peripheral nervous system? I'll give you time to answer, and so we can move on to check on your answer. Okay, which component of the nervous system is responsible for lowering the heart rate? The answer would be the parasympathetic nervous system, because uh, PNS releases the hormone acetylcholine to slow the heart rate. So the answer is letter B. Okay, next question. Any carbohydrate of from three to six units of simple sugars is known as blank. Any carbohydrate of from three to six units of simple sugars is known as blank. Is it A, monosaccharide, B, polysaccharide, C, disaccharide, or D, oligosaccharide? Are you done? Okay. The answer is letter D, oligosaccharide. As we know that oligosaccharide is any carbohydrate of from three to six units of simple sugars, which are the monosaccharides. A polysaccharide is a large molecule made of many smaller monosaccharides. So large or many. And then monosaccharides are comprised of a simple, sim, uh, sorry, single simple sugar unit like glucose, fructose, or galactose, and they cannot be broken down into simple sugar units because it's already very simple. While disaccharide is a double sugar, any substance that is composed of two molecules of simple sugar, which are the monosaccharides, linked to each other. So the answer is letter D. Then number three, Energy-rich organic compounds such as fats, oils, and waxes that are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are known as what? A. Carbohydrates, B. Proteins, C. Lipids, or D. Amino Acids. Again, energy organic compounds such as fats, oils, and waxes that are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are known as A. Carbohydrates, B. Proteins, C, lipids, or D, amino acids? Let's find out the answer. Okay, so the answer is lipids. So lipids are any of a class of organic compounds that are fatty acids or their derivatives and are insoluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents. They include many natural oils, waxes, and steroids. So the answer is letter C. The next question. Okay, uh, purines is to adenine and guanine, while pyrimidines is to, is it cytosine and thymine, guanine and thymine, adenine and cytosine, or thymine and thymine? You can answer like A, B, C, D. I don't know why it didn't go through there, but yeah, it should be A, B, C, D. Again, purines are is to adenine and guanine, while pyrimidines is to blank. Is it A, cytosine and thymine, B, guanine and thymine, C, adenine and cytosine, or D, thymine and thymine? Okay, the answer is cytosine and thymine. So just think of it. Uh, for purines, it should be adenine and guanine, AG, while pyrimidines, it should be CT or cytosine and thymine. Okay, next question. The diffusion of water through a selectively 
permeable membrane is known as A. Osmosis, B. Equilibrium, C. Homeostasis, or D. Tonicity. You can still write your answer and then we'll find out. Again, the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane is known as A. Osmosis, B. Equilibrium, C. Homeostasis, and D. Tonicity. Tonicity. Okay, the answer is osmosis. Osmosis is a process by which the molecules of a solvent pass from a solution of low concentration to a solution of high concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So, that's it. Okay, next question. Um, the ability of a surrounding solution to cause a cell to gain or lose Loose water is blank. Again, the ability of a surrounding solution to cause a cell to gain or lose water is blank. Is it A, tonicity? Is it B, isotonic? C, hypertonic? Or D, hypotonic? We'll find out. Okay, the answer is tonicity. Tonicity is uh, when isotonic is when the concentration of two solutions is the same. No water is moved out. Hypertonic means having higher concentration of solute than other solution. Hypotonic is when having a lower concentration of solution than um, another solution. So those are the explanation from B to D. While the letter A is, um, is st clearly stated in the question. Okay. Next question, a chemical messenger that crosses the synaptic gaps between neurons is known as, is it neurotransmitter, B, synapse, C, synaptic cleft, or dendrite? Okay, again, a chemical messenger that crosses the synaptic gaps between neurons. Is it neurotransmitter, synapse, synaptic cleft, or dendrite? You ready? Okay, the answer is neurotransmitter. A neurotransmitter are chemical messenger. Okay, neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that transmit a message from a nerve cell across the synapse to a target cell, while a synaptic cleft is a space that separates two neurons. It forms a junction between two or more neurons and helps nerve impul impulse pass from one neuron to the other. Okay, while dendrite are the little branches, and synapse is the gap uh, between neurons. Okay, next question. Chemical messengers that are manufactured by the endocrine glands travel through the bloodstream and affect other tissues. Chemical messengers that are manufactured by the endocrine glands travel through the bloodstream and affect other tissues. Is it A, neurons, B, chromosomes, D, D, C, DNA and RNA, or D, hormones? Again, chemical messengers that are manufactured by the endocrine glands travel through the bloodstream and affect other tissues. What's your answer? A, neurons, B, chromosomes, C, DNA and RNA, or D, hormones? Well, find out. Okay, the answer is hormones. Hormones are the body's chemical messengers. They carry information and instructions from one set of cells to another. The endocrine system influences almost every cell, organ, and functions of our bodies. Next question. The stage of cell division between prophase and anaphase wherein the chromosomes line up across the center of the cell and become attached to the spi spindle fibers. Fibers, sorry. Is it A, metaphase, B, telophase, C, prophase, or D, chromatids? Again, the stage of cell division between prophase and anaphase wherein the chromosomes line up across the center of the cell and become attached to the spindle fibers. Fibers, oh my god, I can't pronounce fibers, okay? A, metaphase, B, telophase, C, prophase, or D, chromatids. Okay, the answer is metaphase. Metaphase um, 
Okay, in metaphase, the condensed chromosomes align in a plane across the equator of the mitotic sp spindle. Okay, while prophase, it is the first phase of mitosis, the process that separates the duplicated genetic material carried in the nucleus of a parent cell into two identical daughter cells. While chromatid is one half of a du duplicated chromosome. Before replication, one chromosome is composed of one DNA molecule. While telophase is the final phase of cell division between anaphase and interphase, in which the chromatids or chromosomes move to opposite ends of the cell and two nuclei are formed. Okay, next question. What is the name of the structure that prevents food from entering the airway? So if you have watched um, my previous videos, this question came up from there. So I think it was on the first um, ATIT's video that I made and that has 87 terms. So A, larynx, B, pharynx, C, nasopharynx, or D, epiglottis. I know there's no letters in there, but what is the name of that structure that prevents food from entering the airway? Is it larynx, pharynx, nasopharynx, or epiglottis? Okay, we will find out. The answer is epiglottis. Epiglottis. Okay, epiglottis is a small movable lid just above the larynx that prevents food and drink from entering your windpipe. While the larynx serves to protect the lower airways, facilitates respiration, and plays a key role in phonation, phonation or like sound. In humans, the protective and respiratory functions are compromised in favor of its phonetary function. While the pharynx chamber serves both respiratory and digestive functions. The nasopharynx functions as an airway in the respiratory system. Also contained within the nasopharynx are the adenoids or pharyngeal tonsils. Okay, next question. Which substance makes up the pads that provide support between the vertebrae, tendon, joints, muscles, or, or cartilage? Okay, so if we touch our, okay, if we see our backbone and we see the bones in our vertebrae, um, we, we can probably think like which substance makes up the pads that provide support between uh, the vertebrae and our backbone. Is it um, tendon, joints, muscles, or cartilage? Okay, we will find out. The answer is cartilage. The cartilage, because obviously it provides support support, <laughs> support between our vertebrae. So from the word cart, or the picture of cart, they use it as a symbol for cartilage. I don't know why, but that's from my PowerPoint. Okay, next question. How many organ systems are in the human body? So again, this question is also from my previous um, video. I just... Uh, included it here so that you can still remember. So is it 11, 9, 7, or 5? How many organ systems are in the human body? Is it 11, 9, 7, or 5? Okay, we will find out. Oh, the answer is 11. I can't enumerate all of them, but um, that's it. Okay, next, which element within the respiratory system is responsible for move, removing foreign matter from the lungs. Okay, is it A, cilia, B, flagella, C, fimbriae, or D, pili, or pili, like they pronounce it as pili. Some people pronounce, some teachers pronounce it as pili, and I searched in Google and it says pili, pili, kind of pili, but anyway. So which element within the respiratory system is responsible for removing foreign matter from the lungs? The answer is cilia. Okay. The function of cilia is to move water relative to the cell in a singular movement of the cilia. This process can either result in the cell moving through the water, 
typical for many single-celled organisms or in moving water and its contents across the surface of the cell. Okay, next question. Organized from high to low. This is um, important because you will see this question in the T's exam for sure. Or, you know, in my, in my um, case, it came out. Organized from high to low, the hierarchy of the human body structure is as follows. Organism, organ systems, organs, tissues, which comes next? I should have rewarded this question, but I didn't. But um, what I was trying to say is organize from high to low the hierarchy of the human body structure. So which comes from the highest and then lowest? Just analyze it. Is it cells, organ systems, tissues? Or is it B, organism, organs, and cells? Is it C, organ system, cells, and tissues? Or D, tissues, organs, organ systems? We will find out the answer. Okay, are you ready? Okay, um, to organize uh, the human body structure from high to low, from the hierarchy of high to low, we have this um, system, um, sequence. First organism because first, okay, B is correct because the correct system from high to low is organism, then organ systems, then organs, then tissues, and the last one would be the cell. So letter B is correct, okay? Because others are not in proper sequence. Okay, next. Which of the following choices best describes the location of the trachea in relation to the esophagus? Is it A, lateral, B, anterior, C, posterior, or D, dorsal? Which of the following choices best describes the location of the trachea in relation to the esophagus? A, lateral, B, anterior, C, posterior, or D, dorsal? Our dogs are barking. Okay, so which of the following choices best describes the location of the trachea in relation to the esophagus? The answer would be anterior. In anatomy, we learn that the trachea is located anterior to the esophagus, which is front, in front of your esophagus. Okay, I think that's uh, the test portion of this uh, review video. And now we're going to just have the um, flashcards or just kind of review. The process of changing from a liquid to a gas is called vaporization. The process of changing from a liquid to gas is called vaporization. Okay, next, which of the following this best describes the structures found underneath each rib in descending order. So the descending order is from vein and then artery and then nerve, okay? Next, an atom has five proton, five neutrons and six electrons. What is the electric charge of the, this atom? So the answer is negative. There is an explanation, but I forgot to write in it. I think if it has, um, uh, less uh, proton than electrons in the charge is negative. Yeah. Okay. The next one. When measuring a liquid solution, what lab equipment would be most likely be used? So when you, when you're going to measure a liquid solution, you are going to use a graduated cylinder, not a triple beam balance, because it doesn't work that way. Hey kids! My kids are just... Okay. So gas exchange occurs in the alveoli. So take note that uh, gas exchange um, occurs in your alveoli of the lungs. Okay. Which structure controls the hormones secreted by the pituitary gland? So as we know that hypothalamus controls um, the hormones secreted in our pituitary gland. Next one, where is the interstitial fluid found? The in interstitial fluid is found in the tissues around the cell. Okay, what basic molecular, molecular unit enable hereditary information to be transmitted from parents to offspring? So this is genes. 
The genes is the basic molecular unit which enable hereditary information to be transmitted from parents to offspring. Next question. Blank carries genetic information from blank to the cell cytoplas cytoplasm. So the RNA carries genetic information from DNA to the cell cytoplasm. Okay, next, how is meiosis similar to mitosis? So meiosis is similar to mitosis in the sense that both occur in humans, other animals, and plants. Next, what function do ribosomes serve within the cell? So ribosomes serves as a protein synthesis, okay, in the cell. Which part of the cell is often called the cell powerhouse because it provides energy for the cell? Cellular functions, okay? Which part of the cell is often called the cell powerhouse because it provides energy for cellular functions? So the powerhouse power host, sorry. Powerhouse of the cell is the mitochondria. Okay, next one. Which layer of the heart contains striated muscles? Ma sorry, oh my gosh. Sorry, my reading is so poor. Which layer of the heart contains striated muscle fibers for concentration of the, ma of the heart? So it's the myocardium. Next, which blood vessel contains the least oxygenated blood? It's the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery contains le least oxygenated blood. Okay, this is a situation where you are going to think of the answer. Mm, or like, I think they classify this as science reasoning. Okay, so when you and your lab partner will be completing a scientific experiment measuring the mass of chewed gum after one minute chewing increments, so which lab equipment will you most likely use? So if there is um, graduated cylinder or any other liquid um, uh, equipment that we can use, don't choose that because that's not the answer. So the answer is triple beam balance because chewing gum is a solid object and can be measured by triple beam balance. We don't need graduated cylinder or stuff. Unless you're going to put, like, I think I think you're going to use the di displacement. So, anyway, the answer would be triple beam balance. Okay, which system helps fight illness? Okay, this, I think this is a very um, self-explanatory system, I mean, questions. So, immune system helps fight illness. So, um, which of the following do catalysts alter to control the rate of a chemical reaction? So, it's the activation energy. Activation energy um, controls the rate of a chemical reaction. Okay, next, this one, I have made this question because um, there was a question similar to this in my TES exam. So it's the pH scale. If white distilled vinegar has a pH of around 2.5, then it is acidic. Okay, so again, from 0 to 6.9 or 0 to 7 is acidic, and 7 is neutral, and then 7 point, I mean, 8 to 14 is basic. 7.1 to 14 is basic. Only 7.0 is neutral. Okay, so a blank is the physical and visible expression of a genetic trait endocrine. So it's a phenotype. Phenotype. It's the physical and visible expression of a genetic trait. Okay, what is the correct lungs anatomy? What is the correct lungs anatomy? Okay, um, guys, you remember that the right lung has three lobes right three and then the left lung has two lobes so always remember that and don't confuse about it then the next one what is the name for any substance that stimulates the production of antibodies so as we know that antigen is the substance that stimulates the production of antibodies okay so i hope i was able to help you guys um, in your ATIT's um, future exam. Thank you for watching and keep checking for more review videos. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and share. And this is Beth from Reality Life Series. I do make videos 
once a week or at least you know three th th three times a month okay so bear with me with my english because english is not my first language and i am still learning as well so that's why i don't really put like english english reading and language review videos although i know a little bit but i just rather focus on science and some math as well so have a nice day bye